country. Our Father, we thank you this morning that we're able to come together in this way, uh, that the technology allows us just to be able to uh, bow in your presence wherever we are. We thank you. We don't need really a building. We just need to have you and our hearts close to you. And so, Father, we pray that you would bring us together, uh, both as a, a, a group and also with you. May you be evident in all of our lives and uh, in the areas where we now are. And we pray a blessing on all who would hear the word and all who would participate. And uh, we just pray that you would be with us in this service, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Okay, so the, the difficult times, I suppose, continue to roll on without a doubt, but uh, Christians can find comfort, can't we, in the, pr in the promise that we've got and the peace that we get from God's promise where he says, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. I'm going to uh, ask Sandra, all the way from Holland, to uh, give us a reading. Sandra, I, I prefer to just call you Sandra Giffen because I can never pronounce your surname. That's what I call me as well. <laughs> oh, well, that's fine. Sandra Giffen it is. So Sandra's going to do us a wee reading from Romans. Thanks, Sandra. Okay. So the reading is from Romans 4, 20 to 24. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger. And in this, he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. And this was recorded for our benefit to assuring us that God will all also count us as righteous if we believe in him, the one who is Jesus our Lord from the dead. And we also surely have the faith to be fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. That's amazing, isn't it, that God promises, uh, just as he, he was with Abraham, and Abraham uh, kept his faith uh, we are fully convinced, we should be fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. I'm going to uh, hear this song now from Don Moan, uh, and it's God Will Make A Way. So feel free to join in.
interesting line that hadn't caught me before but in days like now when we seem to be doing the same thing day in day out we don't know what day it is and things he will make something new today and that's a great thing God is new every day for us and he gives us something to do he's at work today he's calling you today to get involved with him and with his work to put your trust in him as lord of your life and he's calling on you to worship him and for you to, to seek his power in your life. And if you think that's impossible and he can't use you, well, let's just remember these words that we've all just been singing. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. Okay, so I've asked Frank uh, if he's got any thoughts in his mind, and I believe he has. So he's going to share something with us for the next few minutes. Frank, over to you. Thanks, Dave. I don't know about thoughts in my mind. It's pretty empty in here at the moment, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, when you asked me the other day, I mean, these these are just difficult times for, for everyone. Everyone is struggling right now, whether it's financially or otherwise. And it is hard when, when we're in a situation like this where we've got beautiful sunshine outside and really, by rights, we can't go out. We're not allowed to go out to save lives. Saving lives is something that's been going on for many a year now, not just physically, but spiritually as well. And I think we need to also be aware of that. And at this time when people are struggling uh, with their own mentality, I think it's, it's something to re be remembered that we have a God. We, he sent his son to encourage us, to keep us right, to keep us where we need to be. Paul was a great encourager over and above the Lord Jesus himself. We have people right now who are struggling with life. Some are working on a much lesser wage, some with no wage at all, no income. But it's wonderful to know that we have a God that has a plan and that he will keep us right and encourage us to put us in the right place. His letter, Paul's letter to 2 Timothy, reads... I thank God whom I serve as my forefathers did with a clear conscience as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers recalling your tears I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy I have been reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice and I am persuaded now lives lives in you also for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, that gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who has saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I'm suffering as I am. Yet I am not ashamed because I know whom I have believed. And I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching 
with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit that lives in us. Wonderful thoughts that through our belief, we are given the Holy Spirit. We have that guide. We have that strength through the Holy Spirit that has been gifted to us by our faith in God. I want to finish with this little part from Hebrews 4, and it reads, and please remember, take this encouragement on board, and if nothing else, think of this. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We have that need, each and every one of us, no matter what it is. But remember, we can boldly approach that throne of grace. Amen. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Frank. Nice to know that, you know, we can have confidence uh, because the Lord has said that he will look after us to those who love him. And so that's really the kind of message that we give out today in lots of different ways through Bible verses, through thoughts, through song, and of course through what we're going to hear in the teaching, both the children and sat. <laughs>
through Christ in me.